Hello. Well, oh, today I want to talk about a overview, I guess, of a, f a franchise that uh, I have loved for many years, um, ever since I first saw uh, these films. Um, obviously, uh, last year was the 50th anniversary, so this is a belated 50th anniversary. Uh, technically, 51st, but that doesn't sound as cool as. 50th anniversary or something of the sort or 55 years and I realized I don't really want to wait four years to talk about this uh, series and so I thought oh better late than never and especially since um you know at the end of May is the main star's uh, birthday and I rewatched the first film which then kind of led me to watch the rest of the <laughs> films uh, and not long like afterwards and so being it fairly uh, recent in my mind I thought might as well make a video about it and uh, just uh, go from there and of course um, I'm talking about Dirty Harry um, the Clint Eastwood uh, films the franchise which um, are all excellent, I think. They're all fantastic. But, well, I know that there are some that are not considered the best, obviously. Um, but overall, I find these to be fairly entertaining, um, which are, is pretty important for movies, I think. Um, not everything has to be very deep and have a big message or anything like that because you know sometimes when stuff like that happens it's especially nowadays it's so in your face and even if you might agree with said message or whatever it perhaps the way it's delivered it's completely annoying and obnoxious and you want to gag even though you might agree with it or whatever um but, you know, there are five films. You know, Dirty Harry, of course, is the first film. Magnum Force, the se second. Third is The Enforcer. Sudden Impact is the fourth. And The Deadpool, not the Marvel character, uh, is the fifth. Um, and there's six discs in this set. And there's, of course, the Blu-ray set, um, obviously, as the... Uh, these sets go, especially this was uh, what, 2000 this set in particular was 2010 so, yeah, by then there was a DVD set um, but or, or Blu-ray also, in addition to this but this is very good um, each uh, film has commentary and at least one featurette, particularly by the last two, there's only like one featurette on those for some reason. Um, you know, the first film was directed by Don Siegel, um, who was very influential for Clint Eastwood. Um, and this also has the that first Dirty Harry has the first time Clint Eastwood has ever directed anything in his life. Even though Play Misty for me came out the exact same year, nineteen seventy one, and I believe also before uh, Dirty Harry. But uh, he, he had not yet directed it or was getting ready to and the way the film turned out it you know his movie was, uh, was released before uh, Dirty Harry and also when you're watching the film uh, one of the marquees of a theater you can see it says now playing play Misty for me so it's really cool that there's a little Easter egg to that film in here and and the uh, I'm sure most people are no, but the sequence that Clint Eastwood directed was um, the scene with the forklift and the, you know, the guy who's going to jump off the building. But then he, of course, we all know he does not do that. Though there is something about that that people sort of mistake, which is that it was a complete 
action. Like Clint Eastwood was, was never supposed to direct that scene. Um, and so it would, and because Don Siegel was sick uh, during the time that was scheduled to. direct it or shoot it uh east would just came in and filled in um reality was it was always scheduled that he was going to direct those scenes um though of course don siegel was not supposed to be um sick or at least it was not in the schedule that don siegel will be sick and then clint eastwood will uh direct this scene uh, it was um you know, originally directed or put that he uh, it was gonna be like five nights. Originally, it was gonna be uh, put aside for just that one sequence. And even though it's short, you know, you never know things could go wrong. And so, um, you know, you want to make sure you have enough days for something like this, or in this case, nights. <laughs> um, Clint Eastwood said he could do it in two nights. You know, there you go. But then, of course, if it was bad and he didn't get it all done in two nights. Well, you know, well, he tried and clearly uh, did not succeed <laughs> in his directorial efforts for this scene. Yeah. In, the, in the end of it all, he uh, directed that entire scene in, uh, I believe, half of the night that was scheduled to be uh, done, so... I believe that's correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it's been a little. It's been a little while since I've heard that. But basically, he did it way faster than was expected of uh, everybody who scheduled that scene to be done. So it was like they had some money they were able to save up or perhaps use for another scene or something that came along the way, uh, which also began the. A, a tradition of uh, Clint Eastwood with his directing. He usually comes on, you know, he usually uh, completes uh, under schedule and with uh, more money uh, not spent than expected. He get, is given a budget and usually, usually enough money saved, you know, for his movies and he usually is comes in like days or so before it's expected that the entire filming process is going to be completed. That's just how efficient he is. You know, he likes to do very few takes and uh, gets everything done uh, as fast as possible that way. You know, everybody can have a good experience, but also, you know, get the movie done in a timely manner and not just sort of like do so many takes and perhaps exhaust everybody from doing the same thing over and over. You know, I think that's, you know, he wants to be very efficient. Um, so that's Dirty Harry, you know, didn't direct Magnum Force or uh, The Enforcer. And for him, he thought The Enforcer would have been the final film. Like he thought at, by that point, they were kind of exhausting the Dirty Harry character. You know, he was in his 40s when he started this film. Uh, franchise, I believe he was, yeah, he was just like 1970, he would have been, like, yeah, 40, I believe, yeah, so, uh, 30, uh, yeah, he would have been 40, um, so he was kind of exhausted with that, and, uh, with the character to an extent, or thought the character was exhausted, like they did everything they could with three movies, so they did a trilogy, but, you know, they wanted to do a fourth film, and they convinced uh, Clint Eastwood he could also not only be the star, but also by that point he had done a good many movies and thought, you know, he could also produce and direct the movie. And so he was able to be talked into directing Sudden Impact, which has the famous line, go ahead and make my day, which many people think is in the first film, but it is not in the first film, it's in the fourth film. Um, of course, in the first film is the famous line, you know, you know, you know, you 
kind of a I don't know what you're thinking. Uh, she fired six shots or only five in the midst of all this excitement. I kind of lost track myself. But being this is 44 Magnum, most powerful handgun in the world, it will blow your head clean off. You've got to ask yourself one question Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? You know, I kind of butchered that at the very beginning, you know. Uh, yeah, I think, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, either way, he, um, you know, that's the an incredible iconic line, but everybody abbreviates it because, you know, you feel lucky, punk. That just is a better thing to quote as opposed to that whole, like, monologue, basically. It's kind of, not necessarily a monologue, really, but it's just very, for an iconic line, it's fairly long. And most people don't want to say it that. And, And the dead uh, set an impact, I think, is a fine film. Um, um, the Deadpool is fine, also. It's not the best. Um, I think it'd be fair to say it is the you know the weakest of them all, but it's also the shortest. Um, but you know, it's fine. Um, there are people talking about like you know what about a Sixth Dirty Harry. He's like, I don't know. By that point, he's like, I don't know. Uh, what's he going to do? You know, uh, fly fishing? Because at that point, he's like, he'd be pretty old and like retired and all that. Um, the one thing I also want to show um, for this set is the kind of the cool like DVDs. Like, there's the disc one, Dirty Harry. Second disc, and there's like the barrel of the gun, and then there's uh, you know, more of the gun here with the Magnum Force, and then his badge and the uh, yeah, handle of the gun basically, it's like around there, and then there's like the smoking gun, some bullets, and then you have a chamber. With a couple of bullets missing. Which is very cool. I think I just like the artwork on the um, on the discs. Those are really cool. I would imagine the same would be for the Blu-rays, but again, I don't have the Blu-rays right now, so can't really uh, <laughs> say for sure. And. Um, 44 Magnum Excitement. Uh, do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Um, I really enjoy this uh, franchise. Um, it's really fun. It's always cool to watch. Um, I found it interesting how, before Clint Eastwood, um, Steve McQueen was looked at to be Dirty Harry, but he said no because, you know, he did he did Bullet, you know, a few years prior to when they are gonna make this film and he's like he didn't want to be typecast as a cop which is understandable um, Paul Newman was asked to be in um, Dirty Harry he kind of thought the film was a bit too right wing for him um, it doesn't elaborate if you know from that whether or not he thought it was bad or not but just like the overall messaging and everything just thought it seemed a bit a little too right wing for him and he was of course fairly liberal where Clint Eastwood is more conservative uh, and compared to Paul Newman of course so but it was Paul Newman who recommended Clint Eastwood and you know you got to uh, at least admire um, the honesty of Paul Newman um and Paul Newman's an excellent actor. I love Paul Newman. I love Steve McQueen. But I think Clint Eastwood was the best uh, choice. I can't see anybody but him um, as Harry Callahan. Um, you know, he, he, he was just excellent uh, in the role. Um, you know, he's a great actor. A uh, great director also. I think, in a way, you could perhaps even argue, argue um, that he is a better director than actor. 
But again, that does that is not at all an insult to his acting because he's an excellent actor. Um, but it's something where you know actors or actresses you know turn director or they're still acting, but they're also now directing, perhaps directing themselves in their own films. You know, I think in a way, like a reason why those who are performers turn to directing turn out so well as they do. Clint Eastwood probably to be the best example, and I think also like Ben Affleck's a good example too. Um, there's others, but those are just the, the two off the top of my head right now. But and most notable examples that immediately come to mind is because you know they've acted for so long, and they have they you know they've talked to directors and they've noticed things and they know how sets are run and they know how like whether there's a good director and everything's going well things are so efficient they know when the director isn't the best you know not bad but they're not the best but you know they could be better but for whatever reason they're not doing better they know how things are and they know how things can go from being all right to being bleh and they know how to hopefully translate um, directing a movie, um, regardless if they're acting in it or not, um, how to direct people and how to uh, manage and make sure everything goes to schedule and everything is running smoothly. You know, because they've been in the uh, having to wait while they set up lights or change lights just to see how things would look if things might look better here or there or, and reset things and get ready for another take or a completely different take if all the or another shot of a scene if all the takes of here are gone or are done uh, and moving on to the next scene and all that stuff they know how to you know properly go about talking and um, going about um, making sure everybody on the set from the actors and actresses cameramen and everybody are fine and everything is good um, and you know Clint Eastwood is just one of the best examples of this I think and he uh, has been a prolific uh, director uh, ever since you know, 1971, when he started with uh, with films uh, of uh, Plain Mystery for me, as well as directing the one scene in Dirty Harry, and um, even directing Set an Impact, which is a very good film, I think, and so many more he has made, and also he's just fantastic as, as an actor, and Harry Callahan is one of those parts that he will always be known for, and I, it doesn't look like he has a problem with that, and that's always good. It's always unfortunate when some people just kind of, you know, they're known for one thing or two or whatever, and yet they might wish they weren't, or it might take them a while to really appreciate what people know them best for. Um, but Clint Eastwood seems to have been pretty happy with being associated with this character, even if he thought that the series itself kind of ran a bit too long um you know he stuck it out and he his performance and all these films are excellent I, I i never got the sense he was phoning it in at any point not even in the deadpool which you know was seen as the weakest of them all he seems like the still you know harry callahan he doesn't seem to be like well i'm here for a paycheck so you know I might as well do the best I can, uh, uh, saying my lines as competent as possible. That way, uh, they all of a sudden don't try and can me. Get somebody else to be in this part. Uh, no, not, nothing like that. And, um, yeah, I, I really love these films. Um, one day I might go and talk about all these movies individually and um, that will be fun to do one day 
And uh, with that, I hope all of you are doing well. hope all of you are having a great day. I have a, a great week and have a great weekend. And I'll see you all next time.